Hello, Andrew Sword here again, this time with a video on PvP. I wanted to talk about some of the crewing possibilities that you have, uh, the strike team and others, discuss some of the mechanics of how they actually work and adjustments that you can make to your own ship and crews uh, to address situations where you're fighting as the underdog and you're trying to punch up against stronger opponents or, or things that are, say, against your ship uh, ship type battle triangle situation and so on. So while certain things like this may be expected in Interceptor versus a uh, battleship, there are other situations that seemingly the same crews against a stronger ship are going to give you a result that you may not actually expect. And what is actually behind this? What's happening behind the scenes that's getting you this sort of result um, when probably you, you wouldn't think so just based on power? So I wanted to first go over what the three strike teams actually are and how do they actually work. So I think a lot of people know what these are. We're going to start with the Cardassians for the Interceptors. And we'll start with Mr. Gul Dukat here. His basic ability as the captain is while on an Interceptor, specifically in fighting another player, he has a 100% chance of applying Hull Breach for three rounds. Now, Hull Breach is something that basically multiplies. It just adds on a massive amount of damage to what your critical hits do. Since the rest of the crew is also designed for critical hits, then this is going to help amplify that. So Gorkon and Lorca have a similar ability. So if you have the two wing officers, a good alternative for Gul Dukat is going to be uh, Lorca or Gorkon here in the middle. Um, ideally, I think Lorca, uh, but more people are more likely to have Gorkon at a lower level. So if you've got no Gul Dukat, but you do have Garrick and Damar, Lorca is a good option uh, to replace Gul Dukat in the middle. Uh, and then his ca uh, officer ability is when shot while on an interceptor fighting a player ship with hull breach, which you know that he has applied to it. Again, it's 100% as long as you've got the two synergies. He's going to increase the number of weapon shots by 29% once per weapon for five rounds. So basically, he's just increasing the number of times that you can fire out. That's going to depend, the specific number here will depend on his level. In my case, he's at level 10, um, you know, getting close to 15, but God knows when they'll be able to source that one again. Now, his wingers both help here a lot. So you can kind of ignore the captain's ability on Garrick, but his officer ability is while on an interceptor fighting a player ship with hull breach, which again, it should already have. Uh, Garrick will increase the critical hit chance by 50% each round. So if you look at what a ship uh, usually has, it would start off with a base level that it is going to have a chance to fire at. So 22% chance right off the bat to fire a critical hit chance. You're going to have other research out there as well that is going to increase your chance of landing a critical on your opponent and your opponent is very likely to have some other research that is going to reduce the chance that you have to hit a critical against them so uh basically consider it around 20 something percent depending on what your research is and what your opponent's is they often very easily cancel out so while you may have a plus five and then your opponent has a negative five, it's going to basically work out to the mid-20s anyway. So assume that you're starting at around a 20-something chance uh, there. And what Garrick is actually going to do is increase that every round by 50%. So it means the first time he triggers off, you're now at a 70-something percent chance. And then the, by the second round, 100% of all shots that you're firing should be critical hits. So assuming that your opponent doesn't have anything to mitigate that back, then that's what's going to happen. He's going to increase it by 50% each round, meaning that this is cumulative. And there's no stipulation on here saying like four three rounds or four four rounds or something like that. So this is strictly cumulative each time. Mine is level 20, so yours may be a lower or higher number than this, depending on what your officer is actually at. But really, even if he is a little bit lower in the 40s or 30s, really by round two or round three, you're now at 100% criticals uh, pretty much out the gate. What Damar does is potentially more important depending on who you're fighting. 
While I'm in Interceptor fighting a player ship with Hellbreach, if Damar scores a critical hit, and because of Garrick and your innate chance, he is going to, that you'll eventually hit a point that 100% of your shots are critical, decrease the opponent's critical hit damage by 42% once per, per weapon for three rounds. And that, again, is a cumulative thing. It will just add up uh, each time that this actually happens. So it's not the pure number of criticals that you see, but it is once per weapon, and it will do that and cumul accumulate it uh, over the course of uh, three rounds. So what this does to your opponent is actually incredibly, incredibly deadly when you are fighting against another build that relies on criticals. So if you are fighting a crew that uh, has somebody like, say, a Khan or an Honor Guard Wharf, which increases their chance of criticaling, then it's going to basically use those criticals against them. And the most dangerous situation is when you actually have the Cardassian crew fighting against someone else also using the Cardassian crew. And what happens in those cases, and I showed the screenshot earlier of a 50 million ship beating a 150 million ship, and it, the difference is almost entirely because the Demar on one ship was higher level than the Demar on the other. What can actually happen is when you critical hit, it goes to what your critical hit bonus actually is. So on your ship here, it will tell you what your critical, critical damage is. Out of the gate, this is at 335%. What Damar is going to do each time he fires off one of those triggers is reduce this by that amount. So he's going to take that 335 and he's going to subtract 42% from it. So even though it always speaks, the game always speaks in terms of percentages, it would sound like you're going to multiply or divide by some number. In reality, it's strictly additive and subtractive. So it's going to take that 335 and it's going to minus 42% off of it each time. Again, there's some other bonuses that apply here based on research. So in the Bajoran faction tree, there are things that will actually add to your critical damage that may uh, not appear. And there are things that your opponent can have that can reduce your critical damage out of the gate. So it would not be uncommon for me to find an opponent that has a Bajoran research that is going to reduce this out of the gate from 335 to 285. They're going to have a negative 50% critical damage that I do against them in that ballpark. Then their Demar is going to reduce that by 42% for each shot that they land. So what you actually find in large interceptor versus interceptor fights where you've got the Cardassians versus Cardassians is that the uh, Demar will actually reduce the opponent's critical hits to below what their normal hits are and beyond that can actually reduce them to literally zero. So you will see in your battle log, you starting off at a full hit damage of let's say two million per shot, um, and then you're criticaling six million per shot. As the rounds go on and that Demar kicks in, you're gonna now critical 100% of the time because of Garrick, so every shot will be critical, but you're gonna see that drop from six million to four million to two million and potentially to zero. And there is a point that you can do what I call zero locking your enemy. So they may be in a massive interceptor, but if their crew is causing them to crit 100% of the time, and my Demar is reducing their damage to zero, then you get into a string of rounds in a row where they are firing, firing, firing for zero damage, zero damage, zero damage. And even though you are in the weaker ship, you now are fighting an opponent that has no weapons, that literally cannot hurt you. And it can take you then 12, 15 rounds to beat them, but you will eventually beat them because you have zero, you have forced them into a situation where they can only crit and those crits do nothing. They would be better off if they did not crit at all but they're in a situation where that's where they're stuck. So that's kind of how that crew works against interceptors, which is a weird situation. I'll jump to the other crews first and talk about them before I then kind of get into the matchups uh, one against each other. The next crew is the Explorer Strike Team. This is Wei Yun and his little buddies. This is hands down the weak one. This is the bad one. Um, it's not bad, bad. It's still the best crew that you can put on an explorer, kind of. 
uh, at least with Wei Yun, um, but it is for sure the least effective of the three, three strike crews, and we'll talk about why here as we go through them. So first of all, Wei Yun here, his ability is very similar to uh, Ducat's, where Wei Yun has 100% chance to apply morale for three rounds when fighting against players, if on an explorer. So he's going to trigger the morale uh, ability. What the sweet spot for this is really the enterprise, because if you have a form of enterprise, morale is going to kick in the automatic shield regen uh, that you're going to get. So it's going to cause that to be a benefit. Each of the strike teams kind of triggers the ability of the epic ship that they're designed to be on. Uh, but beyond that, usually doesn't matter. But the shield regen is definitely a good one uh, for Weiyun. Uh, then his actual uh, officer ability is increased weapon shots by 80%, which is pretty good. He fires a lot more at the start of each round for two rounds. And then, of course, that's going to refresh as long as you do still uh, have that morale, which you, you should. What his wingmen do on pawn, pawn decreases the opponent's critical chance by 63% at the start of each round for three rounds if on an explorer with morale. Now, this has an interesting interaction. It's obviously going to shut down basically the crit rates of any explorer. So if you've got an explorer, they probably don't have a plus crit crew or anything accruing on it. So it's going to basically say, you're just not going to crit at all. 63% should be enough that it's going to shut them down right out the gate. Um, unless they have something, really the only one that's going to overpower this right away is Honor Guard Wharf, and then that's going to get shut down in the, the following rounds. Um, but basically the Interceptor, which the Explorer is meant to counter, this 63% kind of isn't enough because the Garrick ability works cumulatively. So while it can shut down or suppress a lot of the crits in round one, Garrick is eventually going to grow that at 40, 50% per round, depending on your level, and will eventually overpower upon. So the longer the fight goes, the more it's going to switch into the advantage of the Interceptor, but it's going to take longer. So if you've got a strong enough Explorer that you can then basically kill the Interceptor before it switches into that 100% crit mode, then you're going to win. If not, the Interceptor, the longer the fight is, the Law, the uh, more likely it is to eventually overpower you by just doing crits, 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 and uh, and taking you out. So this is a good officer, but it's situational against the battleship. Again, it'll be enough to shut down the crits, but the way that the battleship works isn't really crit focused to begin with. So again, that's not uh, going to be super helpful. So this one, not the best officer out there, but also not the worst. It definitely has its uh, role. However, this guy kind of is the worst. This, this guy is mostly useless. It sounds good on paper, but it's a case where you really have to be understanding that things go off base damage. So in Katika or whatever, it increases the weapon damage by 62% at the start of each round for three rounds. So again, cumulative, which sounds pretty good. So at the end of this, uh, you're going to get 180 something percent. Again, it depends on what level your officer is. Mine's 15. You could be higher, you could be lower, but it's in that sort of uh, area. But it's going to increase the weapons damage that you're doing. However, 62% is not a lot, and even cumulatively, 180-something percent is not a lot um, compared to what some of the other things do. We're going to see a better example of that a little bit later to give you an idea of the scope of what those percentages really, really mean. But just so you know, it's not a whole lot. So of the three guys, while you need this to create the synergy with Weiyun, it's not necessarily... It's probably the weakest of all the strike team officers in and of themselves, and it's why you're going to have some flexibility with the Explorer crews. And I'll, I'll loop back to that in a second, but I'll, I'll cover the Battleship one first. And I didn't have it ready. Oh, I'm sure I have it saved. I do. Um, so, yeah, these ones. This was the first one that actually came out. So here you've got strike team Lon. Um, again, same sort of thing, uh, but while on a, a little different, I, I guess, in a way. So while on a battleship fighting a burning player ship, the start of each round has 
increases number of shots by 10%. Again, that's going to have synergy on it. Here, let me lock them in and come back. Because I think that should be showing the synergy. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, it increases the number of shots by 140%. So once you've got the synergy on both of them, that really shoots up by a lot. This is a lot of extra shots. So if you remember Ducat at my level, I think it was also 10, was at only 29% extra shots. Weiyun was doing 80% more, and this is now doing 140% uh, more shots per weapon. So basically it's just turning your uh, battleship into a bit of a machine gun there. The shield back door, while on a battleship fighting a player, each time your uh, ship hits with a weapon, strike team has a 65% chance of burning it for three rounds. So again, you're gonna be firing a lot of weapon shots and a 65% chance. Really, while you could theoretically miss a round, in reality, there's close to you know a 90 something percent chance that you're gonna get it burning in the very first round. The sidekicks here are the ones that really, really do uh, do the damage, um, but in a sneaky way by bypassing what their mitigation is. So in this case, Strike Team Yuna, while on a battleship fighting a player, the Strike Team Yuna uh, decreases their shield mitigation by 27% each round, and that's at level 10. I know that goes up to 34, 40, um, whatever it is as you're leveling up. And this one actually is very important what your level uh, is on it because at 27%, essentially you're taking the shield mitigation, which starts at a base of 80%, um, then depends a tiny bit based on your research, but only another percent or two. So I'm basically taking the 80% down subtractively by 27% by each round. So in the next round, it's gonna be down at, uh, what's that, 53%, and then down from there, down from there. It's gonna take three rounds, basically, for this to get rid of uh, all of the shield mitigation, whereas leveling up a little bit, it's gonna be like two and a half rounds, 34%, 34% is already 68% gone, you're only at 12%, and then wiped out in round three. But basically, after round three, the shield is not helping anyone by any percent. So you'll see in a lot of uh, battleship strike team battles that the enemy ship dies while they still have a huge chunk of their shield left. And it's because the weapons start to simply ignore the shield and go directly through it. And that can be a huge, huge part of the damage uh, that it's absorbing. It's literally 80% of any given shot is absorbed by the shields, and this causes it to ignore that completely by round number three. So your goal when fighting a battleship is to try and kill it before that can kick in, and, uh, and you've just got no shield left to help you because the shots to your hull are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until round three where it's just taking the full brunt of it. The other uh, officer here, while on a battleship, causes weapon shot, uh, uh, yeah, causes weapon shot by them to have a 45% chance of delaying their opponent's round by one round. So for each weapon that they're shooting, there's a chance that that weapon will not shoot again uh, for another round that you may miss out on that weapon. Um, so that again can be pretty impactful. Your, uh, your goal is obviously to try and fire down this battleship and knock it out of the sky before it gets to the point that it's completely ignoring your shields, but then it has this mechanic, which is actually delaying your ability to do that and trying to reduce the damage that you're putting onto them. So those are the three basic things there. Uh, now I will loop back to the Explorer to talk about some adjustments that people can make here. Uh, so because he's not very important, and pawn is really only situationally important. So if you're going to be fighting something that you know has a lot of critical damage or a lot of critical chance, then you want him to reduce it. But what you can do, and I had set up uh, a little bit on the other ship there, is switch to a bit of a hybrid where you're using the older school uh, TOS crew. We're gonna be using Ohura and Kirk and what Kirk is going to do is 
give you the morale. So at the start of each term, as long as, it ha okay, this one's the, as long as you have morale one, increases the damage of weapons by 50% of the defense of the officers on the ship. So that's gonna increase your own damage output. The officer ability is if the ship is above 30% health, he has an 85% chance to inspire morale for this round. So Kirk is gonna be your morale giver. Then what the other officer does is kind of similar to what that burning crew does much better, but will try and remove some of the mitigation of what your opponent uh, has. So currently, 80% of a shot that gets through their mitigation is going to be absorbed by the shields. This is gonna subtract 12% off of that value, and again, this is dependent on the level, so it can go higher, uh, but it's basically going to take that damage that should have gone to the shields, and that will be diverted to the hull. So in this case, while 20% would have got through to the hull, 32% is gonna get through to the hull. So you've got like 60% extra that's gonna go through and, and kill them a lot quicker. And then of course, having Wayu in here on the side, you're still gonna get these extra shots because he's just based on morale and you're not using him to trigger morale and you don't need synergy on it. So that's the way that that, uh, that kind of works out and that's one of the options. The thing that Pawn was providing can actually be half provided or mostly provided by a below deck officer that we have. So Kira here at level five only is already reducing the chance of my opponent landing a critical hit by 20%. Well, you saw earlier, the innate chance of most ships is only at 20, 25% to begin with, 22% on mine. So this already is almost deleting all chance my opponent has of landing a critical hit to begin with, unless they have someone actually increasing the critical chance on uh, on that ship, which uh, in many cases they don't. So if you're fighting Explorer versus Explorer, Kira is basically going to delete their chance of hit landing a critical anyway, especially when you add on some of the uh, research that you have that further reduces those chances a little bit. So you don't really need Pawn unless you're fighting an Interceptor. Uh, if you're going to be fighting a battleship or fighting another explorer, then Kira on the bottom is already enough to basically take off any chance they have of a crit. You don't need them, and you can go on with the best part of that crew, which is Wei Yun, giving you the extra shots, and Ohura is going to make sure that more, a bigger percentage of those shots get all the way through to their hull, while to some extent, Kirk is also amplifying uh, the amount of damage they do. Again, with synergy here, because that's not counting as synergy. I don't know why they make you do this, but if you back out, back out, back in, now it's going to show the 100% because uh, he's picking up 50% from Ohura. So that's at least a little bit more. 100% of the total defense of your officers is going to be added on. So you're going to be getting an extra, uh, an extra boost from that, although that's not very much. The, the real key is these two on the wing, and Kirk is just really there to provide the morale in the first place. Um, you can also, for this one, swap in Pick Picard the relatively new officer that we got. He is going to, at the start of a round, have a 90% to apply morale for three rounds. So instead of Kirk with the 85% chance when it's above a certain hull health, he's got a 90% chance and the fact that it's for three rounds means once it's on, it's basically gonna stay on uh, for the entire fight. And then the other thing he provides is a weapon damage increase against explorers. So particularly if you're crewing your explorer to fight another explorer, then this is a decent option. Uh, the Ohura relies on morale, but doesn't necessarily, doesn't rely on synergy. Obviously she's not improved uh, in her mitigation by that. So Picard provides the morale, Wayun provides the extra shots, and Ohura cuts down the mitigation done and then Picard gives the extra bonus on an explorer of adding extra damage uh, to what your weapons do, then Kira on the lower deck is able to, uh, to uh, basically reduce their chance of uh, criticaling in the first place. And now you've got a pretty strong crew that's very directed towards that, that, one, uh, that one opponent. So particularly if you're gonna be fighting like 
Enterprise versus Enterprise or Valdor versus Valdor, Corvus versus Corvus, something like that, then this is a uh, definitely a good option to go with uh, it, on any sort of Explorer versus Explorer fight, whether they're the same ship or not. Uh, similarly, in lower decks on the Interceptor, uh, we've got some very important options here as well. Uh, you've got Mariner that is just going to add extra damage, so 140% to the weapon damage of the ship. It's not a huge amount, but it's certainly worth it as long as your stats here are already maxed out. None of the Cardassian crew relies on any of these stats to provide a bonus or anything, so it's okay to go ahead and, uh, and as long as these are full, you don't really need to stack any particular stat. The other one that is super important, and this is because of the full crit mechanic, is that Odo increases critical hit damage by 20% already at level 5, and then I think it goes up uh, 5% as you get them, but probably not many people have Odo at a high tier yet unless, I don't know, you spent a ton of money or something to do so. Um, but he's definitely really good. Again, that 20% is additive, so it's going to take that 335 that we saw earlier, add an extra 20% to it, and that's what's going to be uh, your damage output, particularly in those interceptor versus interceptor fights where you're trying to reduce each other's, starting with that extra 20%, while at the base of it, 20% on top of 335 is you know only a small amount but once you've taken 200 percent off of each other uh, from a few rounds of your demar working then that extra 20 percent could make your shot really be uh you know 50 percent bigger than what your opponents actually is uh, at the time so he is a super important one there uh other guys just load it for stats there are some other officers that are uh, decent for the below decks. The two guys that are not particularly are um, the increase in armor deflection and dodge, 68% by Brad Boimler. 68% uh, again sounds like a lot, but it's not. Um, it's off the base damage or the base uh, mitigation of your ship. 68% is barely going to be noticeable. It's very likely that that will cause anything more than a 1% greater mitigation uh, that you're taking. So that's not really going to be a whole lot. Same with Badgie here. Your penetration, your, your ability to uh, get through to your opponent is going to be increased by 45%. Again, it's very unlikely that that's going to be any more than a 1% difference um, between what you're currently doing and what you were doing at that officer. But there are situations where a couple of these guys can help. So if you're finding that you're in fights where you are losing your shield, then having an extra shield buffer, 70% isn't a lot uh, either. It's, you know, that's going to end up equating to like 5% on your actual ship, depending on what your level is and, and research and so on. But that's something at least. And then uh, Tendi, of course, increases the actual hull, which is reasonably valuable again 100 percent is not going to be an extra 100 percent. it's going to be an extra like three percent or something like that but if you're finding that you're barely losing fights or just want that extra survivability then she's decent but other than that mariner's pretty good and odo is uh really 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 good uh kira is a double-edged sword when on an interceptor because while it can be good if you know that you're going to be fighting an explorer or battleship you can put Kira on to reduce their chance of firing hard against you in the first couple rounds, but you're playing the other end of that sword is that you want them to crit because Demar is eventually going to make their crits do less damage than uh, the rest of their shots. So you want them to crit in later rounds, but you don't want them to crit in round like one or two because the round one crit from a battleship could be huge. It, it could basically take you out, whereas a round three shot from them that crits is not going to do a lot of damage. Um, so anyway, those are the, the strike teams. One big thing that you should be taking away from all of this in PvP combat is that offense absolutely wins and defense is nothing. So anything that is really focused on making you last longer or 
increases your mitigation or whatever in terms of an officer is not really very good anymore. It's all about ripping down their mitigation and outputting the most damage that you possibly can. If it's something that's designed to make you like survive a little longer or increase your uh, increase your haul, increase your mitigation, increase your uh, you know whatever dodge whatever stats that make you last longer that's much 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 less important than just getting the shots out of the door and making sure that you're doing as much damage as possible most pvp fights are only going to last three to five rounds um, it's pretty rare that they go over that five round mark and the turning point on a lot of these crews tends to be round three Round three is when the battleship is completely going through your shield mitigation. Round three is when you've basically hit 100% critical on an interceptor, and it's also the point that Damar may have turned the enemy's critical damage into a zero. Uh, and then for the explorer, it matters a little less. It doesn't have so much of a timed aspect to it, other than the fact that round three is also the point where Pawn's critical... Um, mitigation or crit critical suppression i guess is overpowered by garrick so garrick is adding to each round and pawn is trying to take it off round three is around the point that garrick completely overwhelms that and hits 100 percent, regardless of whether pawn is trying to suppress it or not so that's kind of when the explorer is lose control so they're trying to ideally kill an interceptor or a battleship really before they hit round three whereas the battleship and the interceptor are trying to get to round three and survive to that point so that they can go crazy um is kind of the thing so that's kind of where the entire combat is uh focused around now there are some other crews that you can be using in order to uh strike against certain ships so one i acknowledge for sure out there a lot of people don't have any of these strike teams or you may have one of them or they may be really low level or you've got some of the officers but not some of the others the sourcing hasn't necessarily been great for them so unless you've been able to win some leaderboards or or gotten lucky a few times a lot of them i got my gold ducat as one of those lucky like 0.5 percent chance pulls um, during that event so unless you've been lucky it's unlikely that you've got all of these uh, particularly not to a high level um, so what are the alternatives out there for you what can you do and then also in particular even if you do have them they may not actually be the best thing to use to fight against a particular situation so if you're out there with say a uh, let's say a 10 million power ship and you know someone is coming in with a 20 million 50 million 100 million ship that you just can't beat no matter what anyway they've got the strike team on it uh they're gonna beat you you know every single time anyway if you try and just use the strike teams against them because of that kind of round three inflection point you're not going to live to round three so why are you planning to use a crew that doesn't kick in really well or kicks in over time when you could be using crews that are more focused on what damage can I get done in round one to help reduce their hull points to a point that uh, it's useful to me and my alliance or me and my server. There's always going to be that whale out there that no individual person can take down. So how can you how can you as an individual that doesn't have anything near them contribute to that and help your team take that person down? And there's a few officers that make that possible. So one that's been around for a while is Yuki. Uh, Yuki has the ability to decrease the shield health of the opponent by a percentage, and then this uh, varies based on the synergy so she starts at 10 percent, gets five percent with uh marcus i believe here as well and five percent with harrison and uh, a couple others i think zhao is the other one um so basically can reduce the amount of shield dam shields that your opponent has however again you're not going to be in a long fight so she by herself is not really going to make uh, a difference in terms of lowering the shield value of your opponent however this guy doesn't take time to kick in he's the opposite he only works uh initially 
So for the first round of combat, John Harrison ignores 70% of the opponent's shield. So he's going to be able to take the mitigation that your opponent does, the shield mitigation, and reduce it to very, very low amounts, almost zero, right off the bat. And again, depending on the level that you have of this officer, and it means that your initial shots are going to be going basically directly to the, your, your hull. Then you're going to blow up and be killed. But who cares? You've done your job. You basically, it's almost the STFC equivalent of just crashing your ship into the opponent and ramming them. Uh, since all you're looking to do is get the maximum damage you, you've done and sacrifice your ship, this is kind of the way to do it. And there is a slightly stronger way to accomplish this. And that is by subbing in what you would typically think of as the PVP officer, or PVE officer, sorry. And that's putting in Mr. Pike. So what Mr. Pike here does is uh, increases the effectiveness of all officer abilities that trigger in combat by 40%. We then throw on his typical little synergy partner and now he's going to be, again, I have to do this silly thing to see it, but he's now going to be at 120%. And he's going to, even though these guys, their officer abilities don't do anything for PvP, they're meant for PvE, the fact that he's there is still going to improve our 70% to be more than double that so effectively completely deleting off their shields now i'm gonna run in here because i had done a couple other officer setups um just before starting to take a look at other uh areas of effectiveness so one thing we have if we went with the yuki marcus and harrison combo against just a non-faction ship then we can see, I put it on a Mayflower so you can see the difference better. But the damage done is just under 140,000 as my first shot out of the gate. Yuki has something that is going to increase the weapon damage done by 500% of your, I think she is, yeah, health uh, against Romulans. So I wanted to kind of demonstrate what the effectiveness of that was. So if we then take her and put her against same crew, but against a Romulan target, we're now instead of just under 140,000, we're under 320,000. So her 500% there is going to make a giant difference, uh, basically another 180,000 against uh, the opponent when it's a Romulan. And there is another crew that we have available, Yuki and Yanag, which also does another 500% against Romulan ships increasing that damage and we're now at just over 500,000 so again taking that health and using it to more than yeah that is just about triple uh the weapon damage that we originally started with so if you know that you're going to be fighting a specific opponent there are these officers for each of the three factions and you can line it up for which race or which type of ship uh that you're fighting so you can throw that in and uh and do a lot of damage to them. And again, here, you can see where Harrison kicks in. We mitigate a very small amount. Don't worry about that part. But what gets through uh, is basically over 400,000. The shields, which would usually mitigate 80% of that, so they should be mitigating 300 and something thousand of it, are only mitigating 98. And then the rest of it gets right through to the hull. If we then test out, and I assume we're there now, test out our, uh, I brought the wrong ship. That was a waste of time. <laughs> so ignore that one. But uh, yeah, basically, if we now test the, the Mayflower there when I do finally get there, uh, then we'll see what the difference is when you double that up and you're able to get rid of uh, the shield mitigation. Uh, trying to think so while that's going there is another thing I wanted to discuss because I've seen some people use it and they sound good but they're not good is these dumb officers where's my queen to have the queen somewhere 
I think I have the queen on the ship that is out there. Um, let's see. Where I, I basically use the board queen now as a stat officer because she is completely useless. I don't know where my board queen is. Anyway, the assimilate on these guys is terrible, basically. Um, they take three below deck slots, which almost no one has to spare. And the way that the officers actually work is when fighting a player ship with assimilate, Gosa increases the ship's armor deflection and dodge by 175% each round and that is cumulative for the duration of the fight. And if we were in a universe where fights lasted 20 rounds or something, then that would actually be good. And there's Borka, I think she was staring me in the face the whole time. She then does, uh, when assimilated, increases the ship's armor piercing, shield piercing, and accuracy by 300%. Um, which sounds like it should be a lot, and it kind of should be a lot, but it turns out that 300% is maybe like 1.5% extra getting through mitigation per round, and because of the way that they actually trigger, which is the third guy, at the start of each round, if the opponent's hull health is below 95%, has a 50% chance to assimilate for four rounds. Basically what this is saying is if you're fighting an undamaged opponent, which in most cases is going to be the case, then it's not going to even potentially trigger until round two. When it does trigger, when it, when it is possible to trigger after you've done some whole health damage to it, it is, only has a 50% chance of then triggering. And I think that can go up per... Uh, as you level them up, but 50% is already at level 15. When you get them initially, it's even lower than that. I think it starts at 40. So it has a pretty low chance of actually happening. And if it does happen, it's going to be round two, three, four, and so on. As we've already talked about, fights only really last three rounds on average and push to maybe five. So even if you get this on in round two and these guys have a chance of loading up your higher mitigation and lowering their mitigation for two or three rounds, even all of that combined is only going to make about a five to seven percent total difference. And it depends what ships you're actually fighting, but it's actually more effective against ships that you're already going to annihilate. So the closer it is to the max mitigation to begin with, the uh, harder it is going to be pulled that number down and the less effect and the lower it is to begin with the more likely you are winning anyway because you ha clearly have a better ship and better stats to begin with so it kind of doesn't work in terms of taking down large opponents one because you're not going to last that long the fight's going to be shorter and two because the higher they are the less impact this is going to actually have on them whereas if you're fighting a lower opponent it may help you dominate them but then the ship the rounds are going to be low on the other side. It, yeah, it just doesn't work out. It takes three below deck spots. I don't really know what the hell they were thinking uh, with some of this stuff, but it just doesn't really work. Um, and I, I think this is why they raised the stats on these mid-month, because they probably just weren't selling them. Um, you can get these now through the... Uh, I, I think everyone, one of them you can't, but you can get them now through the Borg... Uh, sphere chests um so doing well there they actually source reasonably well so luckily you didn't really have to buy them you could get them later but uh yeah they're just not good so every now and then they had an event that said basically use them but unless there's a specific yeah, jesus christ unless there's an event that said specifically use them uh then i wouldn't i wouldn't bother with them uh so let's see that mayflower now in place just wanted to ride that quick to show what it does. This is already getting really, really long, but uh, I think I'll come back with some specific battle logs after we do the incursion. I obviously didn't have a lot saved, you know, uh, from before, but just wanted to go over the basics of it. And here, 
we get our ship now with the potentially doubled Harrison. And you can see right out the gate, it's going to double uh, his ability or more than double his ability, but we don't need it because you can't go over 100. And you can see that everything that we shot went directly through to the hull. So you're going to face the mitigation, but it's going to mean that all the rest that is not covered by mitigation, which caps out at 71.2%, is going to go direct to the hull. So I think this is for anyone that's kind of low, middling level out there, and you get to things like incursions or big wars or territory fights or something, and you're going to be fighting much bigger players, and you're kind of like, well, I'm useless. I'm just bouncing off their shield. Ignore their shield. Go through the shield. Uh, figure out what, if there are a specific ship that you're worried about, then crew it for that extra damage for that race, uh, that type of ship or whatever. Um, and then other than that, if it's not a specific one, and you're just fighting any big target, load these three on your best ship and go around and crash directly into people's hulls. And while you may not kill them, you're going to be helping your team in uh, doing the absolute maximum damage that you could possibly have done by getting off as many shots as possible, and they will go directly to the hull. So uh, that's the advice. Like I said, I'll come back and maybe go over specific battle logs. I'll be kind of mindful to collect some over the course of incursions and, uh, and analyze them then. But like I said, this is already longer than expected, so I'm going to cut it off there. Thanks for watching. And I don't think I've ever said this before, but I'm going to make more of these kind of more frequently. So, you know, like and subscribe and get in the comments, et cetera, et cetera. Because um, cool. Bye.